Welcome everyone. I'm Cindy Myers and welcome to tonight's webinar on animals and emotions. And we're going to talk about how you can grow that soul to soul connection with your pets. And if you have any inf uh, want more information, you can look up my website at beananimallistener.com. So um, before we get going too far, a little bit about me. I thought I would uh, share a little um, what's been happening on the farm is I own an alpaca farm and we just had a big event last Saturday. It was our shearing day. And uh, in the upper right hand corner of the screen is Sacagawea. And if you notice her body position, um, she's not putting all her weight on all four legs, right? You can see that lower or the back left leg is slightly bent. Um, and that one is actually permanently lame. And, and so she, can't put a whole lot of uh, weight on it and she just kind of drags it behind her. She gets along just fine and dandy but what is a, a, a challenge for her is on shearing day because uh, it, it can it has in the past caused her a great deal of pain in that leg in just how we've had to position her to get her sheared and it's important that we sh for their well-being to shear them every year. So I've worked every year to try and figure out a better way of sharing her to to uh, minimize her discomfort and the last couple of years we've done i think very exceptionally well and it's because we've used a lot of tools so um and I, i'm a firm believer in having as many tools in your toolbox and helping your animals as possible intuitive energy is and clearing is one uh, and it's an important tool that i use but I also use everything from uh, traditional pharmaceuticals to homeopathy to uh, essential oils uh, to my energy work. And so for shearing for Sacagawea, we use pretty much all of those. Uh, uh, about a half hour, 20 minutes to half hour before uh, we sheared her, I gave her a shot that was a um, kind of like a little pain reliever, kind of like taking Advil or something like that, an anti-inflammatory. And, and the why, reason why it's so painful is, you know, that leg is permanently bent. So when we lay her down, we have to stretch it slightly. Imagine if you can't, if you, if you haven't bent your, <laughs> straightened your leg in a, uh, in a long time, that would cause a lot of pain, right? Uh, <clears throat> so I give her a little a shot of a little pain reliever about 20 minutes ahead of time, half hour. And then I do a little energy work on her to clear any trapped emotions. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And that kind of helps calm her. We talk to her, communicate intuitively. I let her know exactly what's going to happen uh, from laying her down to walking, you know, walking her in, uh, laying her down on her side to getting a couple pokes because they get a couple shots um, and, and we trim their nails and then they get their hair cut and off they go. So this year we did all of those things um, and sometimes I, I give her a little essential oil to help one calm and then I have another one that's very good for pain relief as well for in the instant it's very quick about going in and, and giving um, some uh, pain relief. So I use those uh, all those things. I went to her head did energy work on her the entire time of shearing and she popped right up as if nothing was amiss this time. And in the past, a number of years past, um, actually about five, six years ago, I thought we might lose her during shearing because the pain was so extreme uh, that she went into convulsions. And so uh, it was really important to figure out what to do for her. And this year, the last two years, by doing that process and using every tool, we got her through shearing. So uh, we're gonna talk about a couple of those tools that I, I I like to use. And what's nice too is not only does it um, help them get through a stressful period, but it increases that bond. So the trust in, in me and, and, all, and us two-leggers, it actually improves so that we have this bond because she knew, she actually really knew as I was working with her that, that um, we had that connection going and she trusted me to stay open, to receive the energy work. Um, so it, it actually comes out as a, a, a benefit in the end. So with that, uh, well, before we get going into the real topic, just a little 
uh, housekeeping. If your pet is having a medical emergency, uh, it's important to call your vet. Like I just mentioned, I use traditional medicine. I have wonderful vets, so um, please call your vet if you have a medical emergency. I don't diagnose illnesses, but what I do is in clearing trapped emotions that block energy flow, that does help your pet uh, increase their natural healing abilities. And the other thing that I, I'm very careful about is if you have a pet with serious aggressive issues, it's important that we work alongside uh, an experienced and, and qualified trainer. It isn't enough just to do the energy clearing for situations like that. So I'm very um, uh, strict about the, that boundary. All right, now with that, uh, let's get on to our topic today of animals and emotions and how it affects the mind body and spirit so emotions are just you know what are emotions emotions are really just chemicals that our body creates that uh to relate to an experience that we're having or have had in the past right if we have a memory of an experience our body will release similar those same chemicals into our bodies and we experience similar emotions as to what we were having when we initially had that experience. Um, and those emotions, how they get stuck in our body is that I, I like to uh, equate them to uh, food calories. I believe that emotions have their own caloric count to them. And just like food calories, we, we can burn off so many calories in a day without changing the scale much, right? Um, so is true with emotions. If we exceed what we can burn off in a day because they're just chemicals, um, then those chemicals have to go somewhere and they get stuck in our body just like the food calories can get stuck in our body. And so what happens though when emotions get stuck in our body is they can cause a, a physical issue because they're, you know, they can land in our knee or back or neck something an organ and and the more that they build up in that spot it weakens their that that spot and so it can cause a physical problem and it also can cause behavioral issues so um if it's our pet and they're building up some trapped emotions over something and either they need our attention because they they know they're out of sorts they can start doing something that isn't that is a little bit naughty or we perceive it as naughty, and um, or or you know it can create the aggressive issues. It can create all of a sudden they're starting to potty in your house, and they they never had potty issues in the house. It can cause um, maybe some destructive behavior. They start chewing on stuff that shouldn't be chewed on, uh, stealing things. You know, a lot of behavioral stuff can come out of these trapped emotions. When it can, you know, if you go out on, um, maybe after a vacation, you go out of town and when you come home, your pet can, in a day or two, a week later, all of a sudden start having potty accidents or destroy something of yours. That's quite often related to those trapped emotions of the anxiety, the fear, the loneliness, all sorts of stuff of your being gone. And it comes out afterwards. Um, that's just one example of how the trapped emotions can create a behavioral issue. So the other question I get a lot was, what about our emotions? You know, can they impact our pets? And the answer is yes, they can. Um, they can impact everybody in the household, right? Um, so it, 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 it's not something that's anybody's fault. It's not a, a, a blame or gain, blame type of a thing. It's just that, yes, our emotions, aren't just encapsulated in us. We don't have a hermetic seal around ourselves that keeps emotions all within ourselves. They ripple out. And so the emotions have this ripple effect and, and it can have a positive effect and, as well as a negative effect. So if we're in a really good mood, right? If we're feeling, um, uh, if our heart is really full and we're just feeling a lot of love, our animals totally get that and feel that. If we're in a calm state, they they pick that up. But if we're in a stressed, anxious state, an angered state, any of the negative emotions, they also will absorb those emotions or pick them up as well. They definitely can tell what emotional state we're in. Um, my alpacas are great mirrors of, of my emotional state. If I'm 
in a happy mood and, and relaxed and calm, they'll, they'll come over and a couple of them will kind of <laughs> uh, cuddle up with me and, and want to engage with me. If I'm crabby, I get spat at or, and or kicked. So, so I prefer to go into the calmer, happier state because I don't enjoy getting spat at and kicked, right? But if I'm not mindful of it, they will let me know quickly and I know, oh, that was my fault because I, I came out there with this crappy attitude. So, but, you know, if I had a bad day, should I pretend? No, and you can't because you can't fake, fake it. They understand better than any of us the genuine emotional state. But what I can do is if I'm aware of my crappy state, I can go out there and say, you know what, guys, I, I've had a rough day. And I'll just think it to them. I've had a really rough day. You could do one or two things. You either want to stay away from me, <laughs> give me space, or somebody could be nice to me. You know, come over and give me a kiss on my cheek, and that will make me feel better. And invariably, I'll, either they do stay clear of me, or um, I have one or two that will actually come over and give me that kiss because they've heard that and then I feel better. <laughs> so, so they will work with me when I'm taking um, responsibility for my emotions. So it doesn't mean I'm not allowed to have them or pretend that I'm not experiencing them. It's just that I'm um, being aware of it and, and taking responsibility for it and asking for support. And, my, and our pets are very, very good about uh, responding and offering support when we ask for it that way. So that's how the ripple effect, it can actually go out. And our pets, can, conversely, when they're in a happy mood, we feel it, right? Or if they're sad or down or, or something is off, we know it. It's just that we may not understand what emotional state comes is happening. And that's where we get worried and frustrated because we we know something is off but we don't know exactly what's going on and that's where somebody like me can help you through those because i can pick those up for you so um i, I thought i'd throw this chart in this is um, an animal chakra chart because what well, the topic today is about having that um uh soul to soul connection and so the soul to soul connection is going to be where uh it's going to take place in that heart the fourth chakra that the green spot on your screen i'm pointing at the screen like you can see my finger <laughs> but, but you want to look at that fourth chakra the heart that's your soul to soul connection right it's going to be in at your heart and so when we think of connecting to our pet uh, i will actually focus in on my heart expanding out thinking of love uh, uh lover above I'll, I'll use that phrase a lot lover above and and um, and and what I mean by that is I'm thinking of the frequency of love, or or higher frequency emotions higher than love, and so and that's coming a lot out of my heart, and the heart is a big organ, especially for some of our larger animals like our my alpacas, horses, anybody that has large animals, they can really feel when we have that heart to heart connection, that's why I like teaching with alpacas because they have this big heart and you can really feel what's coming from them. But our dogs and our cats also, you can, or bunnies or any animal, you can really access that heart to heart connection. And when we, when we picture that energy coming from our heart and sending it to our pet, then that's where where we really increase that soul to soul connection it's a really intentional state that you want to go into where we're really concentrating of coming coming connecting from heart to heart not just from our heart to the but from our heart to their heart okay from our fourth chakra to their fourth chakra we want to go heart to heart so how can we do that so getting in sync and creating that heart-to-heart -heart connection, I kind of broke it down into four simple steps. Okay, first one is that's really important is just breathing. You got to breathe fully for them to hear you. It's it, it, if you're in a stressed state, you're not or breathing shallowly, you really aren't accessing that that place. So you got to get some really nice, full, deep breaths going in. Um, I will take a deep breath, hold it for a count of four, and then let it out on a count of four. And I'll do that a few times until I really feel like 
my, it, my, my blood pressure is reduced and I just can really access that energy that and feel that nice heart connection. And then I smile <laughs> because if you're thinking and you're concentrating and frowning, you're not exactly getting the right energy, right? So I'm going to smile and send it because that now I'm, 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 by just smiling, you're creating, again, those chemicals are going in your, your body because your, your brain's going, oh, she's smiling, must be happy, must be thinking of something pleasant. I'm going to pour those chemicals. And those chemicals have a, a, a little radar component. Again, you're not, that ripple effect is starting to come out. So smiling is helping create that ripple effect. And then you might picture a favorite moment either with your pet or, or any moment. It could just be a really, like today is just like the most beautiful day outside. And, and after a long winter, I, I am absolutely relishing these gorgeous days, the green, it's just beautiful. The farm is just gorgeous. And the animals are so at peace and seeing them sheared and they're just so comfortable and quiet and at peace. And it just makes me smile and feel, I totally love them. And, you know, I just fall in love with them during these, these beautiful days. And so I'm coming now from that place and I'm going to share it now with the animal and I'm envisioning sharing that a moment with whatever animal I'm talking to okay, that I'm I'm around so whether it's my dog one of my dogs my cats one of my cats or one of my alpacas or the whole herd I can send it you can send it to every animal on that that you have and just breathe out okay, breathe out that that moment as you're thinking to it like picture it going out in which you want to look at then when you do that is watch their eyes because their eyes are going to soften they're going to look right at you probably they're going to really stare intently the eyes are the window to the soul and that's when you know you're really connecting to them and they're going to return it now when i've done this this technique with my alpacas especially i've done it where i just offered it to anybody who wants it this beautiful energy and what I've had is they will line up, four or five of them will line up <laughs> and because they want, want me to do it individually to each one of them. They'll come right up and look right at me and they'll say, it. and I can hear them say, I want that for me, just me, just you and me. And I will, I will do that, the, each one of these techniques, you know, each one of these steps, breathe, smile, and just share my heart with that that one animal think their name and send it to them and I will feel it back and it's just a glorious feeling it gets you that soul to soul connection you can feel the difference of it than just uh you just loving them you you it's a two way street and it's just this amazing amazing moment um it doesn't last long and you're not going to have it last longer than just a few moments but those moments are so genuine it's just utter genuine connection and that's where these animals are, are are such a great gift to us because they don't know how to fake it we humans fake it <laughs> but they do not and so just allow that experience to soak into you because it this is what genuine heart-to-heart -heart connection feels like and it is just an amazing amazing moment that you get to share with your pet um so with that, I'm going to open it up to some questions and some demos. If you would like to know about future events, you can check out my website at beananimallistener.com slash events. I have a number more of webinars coming up. I have some local stuff happening. I also have some stuff happening um, back in the Chicago area, in, not till the fall, but uh, things are popping up, especially we're scheduling some stuff for the summer. So keep an eye out on the events page page because I'm doing some more uh, in-person type events as well as uh, more uh, online stuff. And I invite you to join my Your Energy Healer closed Facebook group. Uh, we do some fun stuff on that page. Um, I do a, what's called a Tuesday, what I call Tuesday's Teacher. I post a picture of one of my animals and you get to practice communicating with them. And I will give you feedback on how how you're doing, what, whether you're um, and not not only if you're spot on with which most of the time you are, 
Um, but I'll give you feedback and some tips on how to, how to um, connect with them in a, in a deeper way. So that's a fun thing. And then we just do a whole lot of other things during the week. Um, uh, share dreams and analyze dreams, analyze uh, different intuitive hits we may get. And so it's just a, a, a nice place that we can share our experiences and create a community of like-minded spirits. Uh, and if you're interested in my services, I recommend anybody that's new uh, to start with my starter package. This includes a 45-minute phone session along with a follow-up 15-minute phone session. They're super easy uh, to schedule. All we do once you purchase the, the package, you get a link to my uh, automatic calendar and you just schedule a time that works for you and I will call you at that time. Please leave the best phone number for me to reach you at. And I get, I get this question a lot, do, do you need to have your pet uh, on the phone with you? And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't need them on the phone. But it's useful to have you on the phone because what I receive from them often is just a quick little image or emotion that I may not fully understand but will make a lot of sense to you. What a lot of people like to do is have the pet in the room with them so that they can observe what, what your pet is experiencing when I'm tapped into them. So you may notice that your pet um, will look around. <laughs> um, sometimes they just relax and fall asleep. Um, that's, that's very common. So if you'd like to, to learn more about those, those services, you can go to my website, beananimallistener.com slash animal. And with that, I will open it up to questions and we can do some demos. And I see we got some more folks on, great. So if you have, uh, would like some, uh, if you would like um, me to do some demos, you can put it in the chat, raise your hand. If you have voice capability, I, I may try. So I have somebody and they don't have a name. It's Zoom US 42199643, whatever that is. <laughs> you have two King Charles Spaniel. They are eight years old. When I leave the room in the morning, they cry and howl. During the day, they don't do this. It is so strange as they sleep with me and we get up and I let them out and I feed them. They start crying when I go to get dressed. Okay. Um, I'll uh, let me see if I can find you. Do you have voice capability? Hi. Do you have voice capability? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi. <clears throat> I have um, these two King Charles Spaniels, and they're with me right now. And right now they're asleep, but they... Um, I guess from the time I got them from a puppy mill they started crying you know early in the morning and you know it, it hasn't changed any um it's been they, going on for eight years well i've been in a situation where there was a time i had to board them because i fell and uh broke my leg and and my shoulder and i had to board them for like a year and a half mm. and you know they were not um not you know, with me, but well, they've been with me now for you know three or four years. But they're this crying in the morning is uh, they howl. You know, it's like a a crying, a longing, a howling. Okay, and what uh, what are their names? Sophie and Sam, and they're eight years old. Sophie and Sam, and are they siblings? They are, yes, they're brother and sister. Okay. Let me see if I can tap into at least one of them, see who wants to reach out to me. Sam, okay, Sam wants to say hi and work with me. So I'm gonna focus on the behavior. Um, So abandonment is one of the emotions that's trapped. So I'm going to release that. And that's how it's saying. So they're feeding off of each other. I'm not sure. Do you know which one starts it? Or does it? Uh, I 
think it, it used to be Sophie, but now it's Sam. Um, he's sort of the one, Sophie is not so much as vocal as Sam is now. And it, you know, it, it makes no sense to me, really. Okay. Uh, uh, worthless is an emotion. I'm going to release that. Oh, there. That was a nice release. <sighs> And worry. They definitely kind of they feed off of each other on that on the behavior. Um, yeah, and, and the strange thing is, you know, I don't know whether they I walk them every morning and you know, I think they look forward to that and they expect that. I don't know whether they're crying to walk, but even after I walk them and I go in to maybe dress or do something else, they're, they'll start crying again. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really confused by it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and it's just the morning. It's just the morning. It is absolutely just the morning. And it's it's so strange. <laughs> and did but, this happen be, before your accident? Um, when I first got them, uh, you know, and uh, it was Sophie that was always crying. And I knew that, well, she had some medical issues. And, you know, I, I, I thought maybe that was it. But um, they, they want to be close to me. And... Mm -hmm. When I had them kenneled, uh, because I couldn't put them in my bed with me because I had some, I had a broken leg and this and that. Now that they're in bed with me, you know, they seem more comfortable, but they still do this in the morning. Right. You know, they still cry in the morning. And when one starts, then the other one starts. Right, right. So yeah, I just, I get the, that they're behavior. feeding off of each other on that behavior yeah. and the habit. Yeah. It's created a habit. Um, I'm trying to think of how we can tell them. This is a, what I like to do when I release the trapped emotion is to tell them what we do want. Um, so if there's a mix, mix of emotions is what they're telling me is that yes, they're excited and they want it to kind of hurry to go on their walk. But at the same time, there's a real sense of worry uh, um, and I don't know at what time your accident happened. Was it early in the day? Uh, yes, it was at seven thirty in the morning. You know, and they were so you know, so that uh, that uh, panic uh, yeah. uh, of of the incident that happened early in the morning. They get scared, and when you're not there, when you go get up to go to the bathroom or step out of the room. That triggered their anxiety that you're going to be gone, you know, that you're going to leave them and they don't know what happened to you and something bad happened. So well, I would never have thought that, you know, I never would have dreamed that would have been so. But now it makes sense because it was 730 and I was getting ready to get up and, yeah, go for a walk. So that was it. Yeah, so, yeah they have that mix mixed feeling of of the anxiety uh, of uh, being yeah they want to go for the walk but at the same time they get really scared that they that this morning and when the morning happens and you step out of the room something bad you know something bad is yeah. Yeah. right so let right. me clear now i have that better feel i'm going to clear that traumatic trapped emotion from both of them from that experience <sighs> So I cleared it off of both of them. So <laughs> the, we're going to try it in stages. So I'm going to I ask them because they're not quite sure they want to give up the whole behavior. So I'm going <laughs> to ask them to 
give a, a little whimper instead of a full howl. Because <laughs> they can be a little nervous for a day or two until they realize it. But quiet's better But because everything is fine. But if they really get a little nervous, they can just do a little quiet whimper for a second or two. But know that you're coming, you're coming to uh, be with them and go off for your walk and have fun and start your day and all is good. And, and think what I would have you do also now that you know this is before you go to step out of the room, just let them know that you're okay <laughs> and do it mind to mind. Uh, I don't use my outside voice. I, I think it to them and just mm -hmm. tell them that you're fine and you're just, you know, going to the bathroom or getting changed. They'll be right back. All's good. And, and, um, and that, that, and then you're going to go for your walk. So all's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't help and let me know, you know, e email me and let me know how. Okay. It, okay. okay. Well, thank you so much. I've really been troubled by this. I, you know, it, it I have, this is I've had three or four King Charles Spaniels and these this pair has never um, been like any of course they're never like each other but they, they've never you know, I've never had any trouble uh, with any of the rest of them but this this particular uh, brother and sister has really kind of challenged me as far as their um, howling and they're crying it's uh it's it's really different than anything i've ever experienced well that was a traumatic not only traumatic for you but you know they they had no idea what was going on and you know you're there one second and you're not in and right so right and then you're That's back with you after a year and a half so yeah there's a lot of confusion with that and then there's that uncertainty of well oh, it's this the morning that we're going to be gone again <laughs> right Right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, All right. Thank you for coming on today. Anybody else? Uh, let's see. Terry. Terry. <laughs> Terry. So, how are you, Terry? You you reached out to me a couple of days ago. Um, is every how are your animals and your and you doing? The house is still sad, y'all. Yeah. Um, it takes it takes a, a, a number of days animals grieve just like we do and uh, and it can be very intense the the animal grief is again they 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 don't fake anything and so when they experience an emotion it's really genuine and when they lose a, a friend or a sibling or a, a or a parent um, they will grieve or a child they will grieve fully um but but they seem to know how to do it better than we do because they don't try to interrupt the process and so they will feel the sadness for a few days and then they kind of get on with their life um but it's important that they grieve just like we do what we don't want to do just like um but it is an emotion it's a strong emotion so those emotions can get stuck in 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 the body um in their body just like it can in ours and those are things we want to clear out so that we want to have the emotions. It's important to grieve. It's important to have the emotions. Negative emotions do have a purpose. It's just that we tend to stay stuck in them or we don't, or we're afraid of them. So we avoid them or we think we're avoiding them, but what we're doing is staying stuck in them. Um, so, so we want to allow them to process through our bodies instead of staying stuck in them, stuck in our bodies. And that's because that's when it creates more of the habits, the habits like what we just talked about, or physical problems. And it, and it can be an and, it's not just an or, it can be both physical and um, emotional. So uh, we want to do that. Uh, Anybody else, if you have any questions about the topic or um, would like a demo, just raise your hand. I might pick on somebody. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Hi, Oop. Hi Gail, are you there? I'm trying to unmute you. Are you there, Gail? Yes. Ah. 
Hi, Gail. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. How are you? Great. So, how did Jager do this weekend? He could, He did well. He got um, reserve winners at the national specialty, and um, he he was a uh, a little rusty, <laughs> like we talked about, and anxious. Um, I took him to the dog show, and it it is a uh, a lot of. Um, noise and, and so forth going on and he hadn't been for a while mm -hmm. so, um, but that was something curious i i wanted to ask you about that you know did he bring home any residual emotions from that episode because there's a lot of people in there that you know have, have um good emotions and uh negative emotions yeah yeah a lot of anxiety i imagine and not just from people a lot of anxiety for the dogs. Ah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Because uh, not everybody is tending to their dogs like you are. And so um, uh, the anxiety of the dogs can be really spilling out all over the place. Because, again, it, it doesn't matter the species. It, uh, uh, the, the emotion is a chemical in it. It's going to ripple out um, what, no matter what the species is. And so uh, we're, we're absorbing it and the other dogs, the other dogs are just more tuned to it. So if you go to the vet, it, yes, it's the smell can upset them of the vet, but uh, it's also the scent of fear. Uh, and so I know uh, some of my dogs go into some vet offices and they just, their tail goes between their legs. They instantly, sorry, I got hair in my mouth. <laughs> they instantly get afraid. And it's not that they've ever had a bad experience at that vet. It's that they are picking up the anxiety of the other animals. And so they're going, oh, this shouldn't be safe because let's hear, are you hearing all this fear? And they're like looking at me like, don't you hear this? Don't you feel this? Don't you smell this? <laughs> and it's like, I'm not picking that up, but they definitely are. And I'm picking it up because I'm observing my pet, my dog or whoever I'm taking that to the vet. How you know, they're, 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 they were fine a second ago smelling stuff outside the vet office and the second we walk in the door, they're like in a, in having an anxiety attack. <laughs> and so, um, um, so that's because they're picking up the senses of the other animals around them. So, um, uh, let's see. So that's great. Uh, yeah, let me quick check on J Jager to see how he did. Or how he's doing. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so that's why it popped into my head is that he was already sending that to me. <laughs> he goes, there were there were a lot of stressed out doggies there, and people. Um, so yeah, he brought some of that home. So we'll just clear that a little anxiety, as well as his own. He he was a little anxious too. I think we did most of his clearing that first night. Um, Some confusion, yours, no. not his. He said that wasn't his, but we'll clear it because he absorbed it. He said there was one dog in particular that might have been near you, maybe near your where, your spot where you had it, your, the, the crate. Yeah. The table. He said there was one. <laughs> <laughs> right next to him, <laughs> which was that's interesting you bring that up because there's there's times where I bring him outside to go to the bathroom or just exercise, get take a breath, come back in, and he he'd lay down, and then um, when I come back, he'd be in his crate and bark at me, and I didn't know what he wanted so i would say geez do you want to go out again and trying to get a sense of uh understanding what he was telling me but i had a heck of a time trying to figure out why he'd be he'd be barking hmm. and he would <laughs> never do that before so <laughs> and he probably was like wanting to go <laughs> next door yeah. uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if he could point, he would have gone. <laughs> That's interesting. Who's it? Yeah. 
That's interesting. And okay. Really, woo, energy. <laughs> and yes. I, I don't know if it was just, uh, well, I think it was a combo uh, person and animal. Absolutely correct. Yes, thank you. That clears that up totally. Yeah, a lot of um, anxiety and, and uh, tension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and and then it feeds, you know, they get into that negative feedback loop because the dog, poor dog's going, well, if mom's anxious, I must be really, you know, see, this isn't a safe place. <laughs> this isn't good. This isn't supposed to <laughs> Why, am, why are we here? Why are we in this stressed out, scary place? It became became a scary place for this other dog. And and Jager is trying to not uh, let that energy come in because he knew he was trying, uh, he, he, you know, he was trying to have that soul to soul, heart to heart connection, but that was interfering with you guys. Yes. You can't have that energy. It's really hard to circumvent that, that kind of, heart to heart energy when somebody right next to you is pumping out anxiety like crazy. That, wow. That's counter. <laughs> that really answers a lot of questions, Cindy. Thank you. Because I really took your advice and, and was talking to the dog and then the exercise of key touch that you, you taught us. Um, I was using that in uh, tea touching around his heart chakra and <laughs> making a connection that it was, you know, we're going to have some fun together. And, and he really was, uh, up for it. Mm -hmm. And then something changed. And, uh, so you answered, answered that that's on point. Absolutely. Right. And it, uh, so then, you know, it's not always about us. You know, it's, we think we're, we're doing something wrong and not able to connect with our pet and it had nothing to do with you or Jake. <laughs> it had to do with somebody else interfering. Their energy was interfering and impacting you. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank so, you. so sometimes when you're in those situations and when you go out on your walk and you kind of get away from it, that's a good time to try it when you kind of have a private moment and you can kind of get away from it all and it's just the two of you see if you can get that connection outside that environment okay. and then you know it isn't it isn't between the two of you then because you just got it <laughs> um and, and and he might kind of settle in and then if well, when you go back if it goes into that anxious state then <laughs> you bet you have a pretty good idea that it is it isn't about the two of you at that point there's something else happening around you uh, and that, that's just really hard to to handle, you know. I, it, there's no good, easy answer in fixing that because unless you tell the people, <laughs> for, teach the other person next to you, breathe. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be so anxious. <laughs> but, I was actually telling them that, but didn't make the connection that it was affecting the dog. That's yep. It. yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah, they're 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 better radars than we do on that stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, okay, Janet, can you check in with your new dog? Oh, you got a new name from Ben. Okay, you just came home from the shelter. He may oh have kennel cough, and I took him into the vet today, where he had a lot of trouble when the staff tried to touch him near his rear. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Wonder what that's about. Let's see. Does he know his name yet, Ben? I might have to access him through his previous name. But let, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get there. Um. Hmm. So overwhelm right now. He's in a little bit of sensory overload uh with the change and and learning about his new home and and you uh all all the senses smells everything you know things actual things in the house have uh all all everything just everything he's in a little and a, uh he's a big beagle mix right so he uses his nose a lot so the scents are a little bit overwhelmed everything is on overwhelm so let's just kind of do some quiet energy on him. Let's clear a little overwhelm. 
I'm going to let him know he's got a beautiful new home and person to be his companion. And to love him. Hmm. So I'm picturing all that going right into, again, his heart chakra. But we're also, because he has an issue with his rear end, let's see what that might be about. If he'll send me any pictures on that. Um... Yeah, probably something. Well, some of it is he just didn't see what they were doing back there. And so uh, he didn't like being touched because he couldn't see. And, and it felt like he was being attacked. So he might have been attacked before. Um, and, uh, and at the rear end. And so anybody especially if he's being restrained and then attacked or where he would perceive it as an attack. Something was touching him and he can't get to look to see what's happening back there. Uh, that That's going to upset him. So we might have to do some little um, slow work on getting him comfortable with his back, back end touched where he can see what you're doing, you know, um, but start, start where, you know, up in the, chest and shoulder area where he can see you petting him and does he does he like to get petted so if he uh, and I would do the gentle touches like we talked about um, and do those on him just to kind of get that calming energy going into him instead of petting do as much of the tea touches so um, for folks that are new, I'm not a T-Touch practitioner, but it is a wonderful modality for helping calm anxious pets. Uh, I encourage you to look it up. I'll, I'll type it in here and you can Google it. Um, I put it in the chat box for those of you who have your computer handy. Um, and you can Google it and get some YouTubes on how to do it. It's a, just a really simple a gentle gentle technique and it is excellent for bonding and getting that soul to soul connection but it also for anxious pets you can it creates a it creates a parasympathetic response system which we want to help um, put more of those chemicals in our body in their body as opposed to the adrenaline base which are the fear based chemicals that when they go into the fear state that's what's getting introduced into the body so we want to get the the parasympathetic chemicals into the body, the calming the calming juices, and so that technique, that modality, is something you guys can do on a regular basis, and that can really put the, um, those nice uh, calming chemicals in, uh, into their body, and that really will help, especially with a rescue animal, help increase the bond and the trust uh, with with you. So I would recommend doing that with, with Ben. Uh, so oh, fear, I'm going to clear fear, anxiety, overwhelm. Clear. And, I'm, and what I'm telling him is that he gets to have fun. <laughs> He's going to have fun with you um, and joy and love, lots of love. And so he can open up to that experience. And he's also, uh, you know, when you bring home a new pet, we can't help but be a little worried and anxious ourselves. So important for you to breathe yourself um, because again, you're, you're, he's picking up whatever emotional state you are in. And even though it's hard not to be a little anxious with a new animal, you're kind of <laughs> hypervigilant a little bit with them until you get your routine down. But at the same time, um, I wanna, we, that's when it's really important to really do your breathing, get that good breath going to help keep you as calm as possible. If you have any essential oils, 
um, anything that's a calming essential oil. I'm also going to put this down for you folks. Um, this is uh, the essential oil company that I like to use. I have no affiliate with them, but they're, um, I trust them for animals, especially for cats, since um, essential oils are dangerous for cats. Uh, um, animal. <laughs> This is their website, animaleo.info. I put that in the chat box there for folks. Um, and they have very good um, uh, essential oils. I like the, for dogs, the Calmumile. That's an excellent one. I use it with my guys all the time. I actually use it with my alpacas um, during shearing. Uh, um, very effective. <laughs> and it worked on me. <laughs> it helped keep me calm <laughs> during it as well. So, which again, is if I'm anxious, my animals are going to be anxious. And I'll, and I'll tell you, um, this was one, this was about the smoothest shearing uh, process of my farm that I've had um, to date. And uh, Kathy Sweet, one of the attendees today, she was the handler. She was the one that caught my alpacas and haltered them. And she talked to them. She had essential oils on her. And those animals came in and just, you know, they weren't thrilled. And But we had minimal spitting and piddling incidences. Um, they were relatively calm through the whole process. And we got done faster than we have. And, that, and a lot of that I attribute to her talking to the animals um, while she was, she was helping keep them calm. She let them know what was going on, what was about to happen to them. So they just came in and, and handled it. And, and we got done like <laughs> record breaking time. We, we were about two hours faster than we were the previous year. It was the smoothest shearing. And I really attribute a lot to, to her communicating with my animals. Um, before they would work, would get their, before their turn. So it really works. Um, again, having as many tools in your toolbox for these incidents, for these um, for these experiences, life experiences that may come up, and it's really great if you have a rescue animal that you're bringing into your home. We have a number of people that are, are have rescue animals. Um, so get as many tools as you can because they get triggered. Um, or, or even like for um, the first person, uh, I didn't get your name. <laughs> you had the code on there, um, but with your two um, dogs that were anxious, the essential oils might be a nice tool for you to have that that you might put a little on before you get up in the morning, or have it in a diffuser, and um, that might just help take the edge off before the, they get going, because we want to retrain the habit at that point. So. Those are things you might try. Um, let's see, I saw somebody's hand was up. Let me see who that was. It was Mich Michelle. I think I saw your hand up. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Hi Michelle, welcome. Hi. Hey, um, I just got back from vacation and I had decided, I have the two cats, Holly and Roy, that you worked with before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided to have Roy, who six months ago, visit with a relative. And Holly stayed here by herself and my son checked on her. But now they're back together and Holly is, it's like she took a huge step backwards. Like she's back halfway to where she was getting along with him. And he just doesn't understand it. He just wants to play with her like he did. And she's just growling and hissing at him again. So. Oh, dear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what we can do. She, she saw that as a, her vacation to having him gone. <laughs> oh, yes. I figured that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She was kind of disappointed that he came back. <laughs> Uh, so she's a little angry. She's going to release that. Peeved. Oh, that's the word. Uh, peeved is her word. <laughs> she's been really, really happy with me. I mean, she's been coming yeah. up to me and wanting to pet and purr and everything more than usual, but. It's like with him, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not sure how good of friends they'll ever be, but let's hopefully we can get them a little more um, uh, 
<laughs> friendly towards each other. <laughs> she said, he's such a pest. <laughs> um, it's just because he's young, so I'm going to let her know. It's because he's, he's not going to be young forever. <laughs> he's going to okay. settle down. So I'm also going to tell her it, it'd be um, more beneficial if she helps teach him instead of just being crabby with him. <laughs> that she could help, you know, teach him appropriate manners and uh, what's acceptable behavior instead of just crabbing at him all the time. Mm -hmm. She's a little resistant to that idea. So let me keep trying to convince her of it. <laughs> so she kind of sighed. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Well, what is what is Roy's feeling about the whole thing being away for a week and coming back? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, well, before I do that, I just kind of pictured to her kind of what we could have, what the experience could be like. So she could teach him, like, appropriate what she wants, how she, it would be okay for, you know, just to have him walk quietly past her. <laughs> <laughs> that instead of him going, I want to play. <laughs> yes, pouncing on her counting on her and that would be just a whole lot you know she would she would you know it would be more acceptable for her but she can teach him that instead of just getting mad because then he's getting to the point where he's kind of seeing that as the game now I can make you mad mm -hmm. um, it will be a whole lot more beneficial for her and I'm having my eyes closed so I'm talking to her as I'm talking to you all to teach him instead of just being crabby so Roy, um, said it's good to be home. I had fun. He missed you. <laughs> I could tell. He came right to me when I walked in the door. Um, <laughs> so he said, it was nice being away from her too. <laughs> Sibling rivalry, geez. Yeah, from the crab mount, from the crabby one, he said. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about her crabbiness for a while. <laughs> so it wasn't just me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> oh, they're funny. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to also picture for him that it, it'd be more pleasant for him just to walk, give her a wide berth. And then go find something else to go play with because yeah. yes, it's not, it's not as much fun with her. So <laughs> there's other fun things to play with instead of her. But he's kind of bored, so um, I gotta get him some more toys or something, something, something new, uh, something new, or just engage with him yourself a little bit more. Yes, you you have to be his playmate because mm -hmm. my sister isn't going to do it. Like my only child son had. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did that answer your questions? Yes, that's great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let me know how they do. I will. And also, thank you for that Marie um, Marla Freeze book. I read that while I was on vacation, and it was very good. Oh, great, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Let's see. Oh, oh, <laughs> Rena. <laughs> Thank you, Rena, <laughs> for putting your name down. Uh, and Denise, you have a question. Does Willie feel like he has heart to heart with me now? Well, let's find out. And let's see. I think you have. Where are you? I don't see you on the list. I don't know if you're still on, Denise, but if you are, uh, I will tap into Willie. 
Oh, yes, he definitely does. <laughs> it's not heart to heart with him. It's more butt to heart. <laughs> he likes to go backwards towards Denise to get butt scratches. So <laughs> that's his uh, one of his ways he shows his affection with you <laughs> is going butt to heart. <laughs> um, but at the same time, uh, also car rides are very special to him. He's saying that he really, that's when he feels the closest to you sometimes is in the car. I think again, all the extraneous noise of the household is gone and it's just the two of you and you guys can, he can really connect at that level. Cause he gets into, um, he's still, uh, He's definitely not as hyper vigilant as when we first started working together, uh, but he's just naturally slightly got that uh, alert, you know, being aware of his surroundings. But for whatever reason, in the car, um, he kind of lets his guard down, um, and he opens up to you most fully in the car. So. Um, if you're still there, that was that is your best time to try for that soul to soul connection. And once you kind of get a, a find a place where you where you both feel in that safe zone, uh, and you can experience it, then you then then you can expand out and try it in other places. But it's great to to find that that sweet spot, you know that 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 location where you both feel where you can really relax. For me, it's out in my field with my animals, and I can just kind of let let all my guards down and there's no distractions in the house and I can just be really at one with my animals outside um so that's that's where I like to kind of have I can get into that deeper connection with them I can do it in the house but it's so much easier <laughs> when we're out outside in that space together and I, that's with my dogs as well um although uh, my golden retriever in bed <laughs> when when we wake, wake up in the morning we get that we can have that soul to soul connection because again we haven't started the day so none of the outside influences have come in and we just she just puts her head on like on my chest or uh, cuddles up right next to me and she she just looks right into my eyes at that point with her soft you know they're very soft and kind of half asleep and she just stares at me which you know dogs don't typically just stare at us but you know that's when she just had we have that um real eye to eye soul to soul connection and i just you know it's just a beautiful way to start the day um it's one of my favorites favorite moments to in, of the day is when when we get into that connective spot so we're at the top of the hour, a little after it. Uh, so I'm gonna, uh, unless anybody has some burning question at the, or, or session uh, a demo they really need, um, I'm going to call it an evening. If you have any questions, you can reach me at my uh, uh, email, Cindy at beananimallistener.com, or you can check out my services on my website at beananimallistener.com and with that i thank you all for coming on tonight i appreciate your time and attention and look for the next webinar is going to be a human one and i think we're talking about family dynamics on that one and how again the ripple effect is affects our family uh, interactions so with that have a great evening and we will see you all soon.